If I'm in your guys' presence and I bet the Broncos again, you have permission to kick me in the nuts. The only podcast that puts its money where its mouth is. I'm your host, Rich Ryan, and I'm joined by the entire collective the disciple, Brett Colson, Donnie, DP Peters, and the resident moose himself, Mo Nawara. Listeners, if you haven't already, subscribe to your podcatcher of choice. Leave a rating, a review. Those things help tremendously. Viewers, shouts out. Don't forget to hit that bell, subscribe to the Lines US YouTube page, and hit that like button. Comment away. Give us your favorite picks this week. All the engagement helps a ton, y'all. And salute to the patrons who I'm actually momentarily going to be broadcasting live to. I forgot to hit the link, but patreon.com slash gridirongamble. Get to listen to us live. Get to chat to us live. Very important during games like this where absolutely nothing is happening on Thursday Night Football that you get in to the Discord and chat with us. 14 and 6 on the season so far. If you haven't already, check out the recap podcast. Donnie also recaps all the Las Vegas contests, Circa Super Contest, and Survivor as well. Still live with two Survivor entries. We'll get to that at the end. But good vibes all around. Boys, really good start so far. First quarter of the season in the books. Mo, I dare say even you have to be positive about the start we're off to so far. Very positive. I was not too pleased uh, when Brett and I went bust uh, thanks to Joe Burrow in week one. But at this point with, I don't know, what's the fraction of the contest that's left uh, in the Survivor? 20%. Yeah, we're way above EV now. And rolling. All right, let's get into it. And we start every week with split games where there are two hosts on one side and two hosts on the other. And we have to jet across the pond for the first split game. I don't even know if I have a sounder or a, a visual for that. So I might just, that, the people watching out there might have just seen us stare into nothing for the last 15 seconds. Packers, Giants, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Spurs, man, tough week. Not only do they have to host that horrific football game, but they lose to the Gooners. Shouts to Jan. What's what are, a Gooner? Then, yeah, what are Gooners? Oh, Gunners. Uh, yeah, so we, so. What are Gunners? Affect, <laughs> Those are from Arsenal. The Gunners are from Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal Shield is just a big cannon, so they call themselves the Gunners. And then uh, they call themselves the Gooners to be funny, and they kicked our ass. And then we lost. Oh, we didn't lose, but we drew in Champions League, which was, was pretty much a loss. Regardless, Packers, Giants, who has the highest opinion on this game? It's DP. He's got the G-Men in his top five. Replay of last week, is this DP low total? Packers can't be laying this many points. A lot of the things that we were talking about for the week four slate, DP. Yeah, I mean, my first note is that this is a similar spot to last week when the Packers played against the Patriots. Um, I mean, Packers are pretty bad against the run this year, and the Giants have been pretty good with the run. So um, I just envision Dayball backing Saquon, even getting Daniel Jones out there running around a bit. I mean, that's what the Patriots did. I I, st- I still don't, s- I don't think, first of all, I haven't seen, I said can it you, last week. Can you run on one leg? I was going to say, are we confident that Daniel Jones can run? I mean, whatever. He'll, fine. Who, who cares about Daniel Jones? Then? It's all whatever. about Saquon. QB1 is hella questionable. <laughs> whatever. Who cares about the quarterback? <laughs> yeah. That's not part of football. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Um, no, but listen, uh, I, I said it coming into last week that the, this Packers team isn't a team that I think can run away from teams. And I feel similarly this week. Nothing from the game in week four against the Patriots shows me that this Packers team is ready, at least right now, to run away from teams. You have to have a really good passing offense in order to do that, in my opinion. And they just don't right now. Now, I saw some positive things that I could pick apart here and there. 
Um, but overall, I'm just not there yet. I mean, fast forward me to like week 16, maybe, and maybe I'll be there with the Packers. But right now in week five, no, I'm not there. And this is too many points for them to lay. And I just trust what Dayball is going to do with this team, specifically in the running game, slow this one down and just keep this one pretty close. Brett is on your side, but he's got them low. Talk about the G-men real quick, Brett. Yeah, just to follow up on what Donnie said, the Packers just seem content to run the football. They're third in run play percentage, 29th in neutral pace. Can they cover big numbers with this style of offense? Uh, that being said, I do have con- some concern here with the Giants. Just another mismatch in the trenches for them. Thir- 31st in pressure allowed right now, 31st in adjusted sack rate. And the Packers, yeah, they blitz a lot, but they are ninth in pressure rate. They generate a lot of pressure and, and they've been getting sacks and that you always are concerned when Daniel Jones uh, is in these situations. Giants look like they might be getting healthier at skill positions. Wandale Robinson practicing again, but what the hell is a Wandale Robinson? Like how, so how, 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 how effective is on, how a round rookie or whatever this is? Yeah. Like how effective <laughs> is this rookie receiver going to be in his first start against the Packers? So the Giants are just a mess. And I mean, I'll, I'll take the points because just because of the style of play for the Packers, but I don't love it. Yeah, I think this is two different games, right? It, it It is easy to look at last week and see the Packers struggle and say, why can't it happen again? But I don't know how predictive Aaron Rodgers throwing a pick six is, you know? Uh, may, maybe something Dobbs dropping passes is a little bit more predictive, although that was a pretty big bad beat for the Packers as well. But I don't think we can just assume that Rodgers is going to be handing seven points to the other team every week. And Although we do like Dayball, uh, I, I think Donnie was on to something with Bill Belichick back against his wall, throwing the kitchen sink out there last week in Lambeau, wanting to do everything he could against Rodgers. If Bill uh, Belichick Brett, actually threw the kitchen sink out there, they would have won the game. But Bill has no idea how to coach anymore, so they well, didn't no, win the game. They would have won the game if something Zeppeli could hold on to a football. But that I mean, fumble maybe call an some aggressive backbreak. plays when you can have a chance to win the game call, and call don't aggressive. just run the ball into the center of the line. Did you watch it was that working. kid throw the Why football? Why would they stop? You have nothing Remind to lose. Me. You're literally the worst team in the universe. This is the worst team Bill <laughs> Belichick has ever had. Who cares? Go for it. <laughs> Imagine being this spoiled that you think this is the worst yeah, team. Exactly. Giants are getting healthier. I think a more important injury update for the G-Men might be Leo Williams. Uh, he might be back in the middle. A key cog on defense for them. But this is the Packers rushing attack. Like... Uh, even against good teams, they're going to be able to create lanes and get Dylan and I almost said Lacey. My my heart throb. Put a fat running back out there and my heart starts beating uh, Jones and Dylan. And yeah, I could see the Packers running away with this even by running the football. Mo, you're on my side. You have it in the same spot as me, right in the middle. Put a pin in this contest. Yeah, I think this should be closer to 10. I I just don't think the Giants are going to be able to do absolutely anything on offense with a a hobbled quarterback at best. I think that's like the best case scenario is they have a hobbled Daniel Jones. He's been getting a lot of mileage out of his legs, dude. I I think if he has to pass, it's going to be very, very bad. And and yeah, I, I know that the Giants offensive line numbers are very good. But when I look at these names, I don't trust it. I don't think it's going to continue. We move to our other split game, our second and final split game. And speaking of the worst team in the universe, the New England Patriots play host to Brett's favorite team in the NFL, and that is the Detroit Lions. As I reach for the sounder, (laughs) grit and kneecap biting out of the Motor City. There's no line that I can see available. I think DK and FanDuel sometimes hang uh, what's it called when you put a line up there? You guys will know this better than me, but it's marked, circled, circled, circled. but not not rule of circled, but it's it's a circled game, limited, uh, meaning meaning that limits uh, are lower than normal. Well, how three can anybody half. cap this game? Yeah, this is three, impossible. Three, <laughs> something Zeppeli minus three and a half in the National Football League. Brett, you're shaking your head, but me and the Discord are shocked that you didn't have this as your number one play. Really? Well, what, what? Backup I, quarterbacks. You love backup quarterbacks and you hate <laughs> yeah. the Lions. Yeah, exactly. This is tailor made. Yeah, but I'm on the other side. I know. That's why I'm shocked. Well, did you guys watch Bailey Zappi last week? This is not even a quarterback. 
It's Zeppeli. He's scrappy. What are okay. you talking about? He was okay, wasn't he? Yeah, was I thought he? he was fine. Oh man, I don't know. Maybe I, I I I saw the whole first drive he had, and he was throwing the ball into the ground, and it was it was ugly. But he's so <laughs> bad, and he's like five foot three. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who who could have? But uh, Brent, you're the only person with an opinion here. You had the Lions in your top five. Of course, I What's did. Going on because here? the Patriots are abysmal. I had this team 29th <laughs> in my power rankings this week. 29th. 29th. How are they minus three and a half against anybody? Aren't the you Lions take- significantly better than the Patriots? What are they doing here? They are. If of- Amon Ra and DeAndre Swift are playing. But what if they're not? I mean, they have the DeAndre, DeAndre Swift play. is great, but he's like Jamal Williams is fine. Is he fine? He's he gained fine. Three yards a carry outside of that fifty yarder. They have an offensive line though. Twenty ninth. Yeah. Didn't the Patriots play really Bailey well? Bailey Zappi. I'm so conf- yeah, but it's it's Brady or it's it's Belichick. He turned Brady into a, the greatest of all time. What is he gonna do with something Zeppeli? Is it really Zeppeli? Why did I? Why did no, I keep? No, it's no, not. It's, but we're gonna, it's Zappy. <laughs> by the end of the pie, he's gonna be cannoli if, if we keep going. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened last week, man. You mentioned the the pick six. I th- I think we were all ready to punt our our Patriots ticket to the sky last week after they put in Zappy, but. I, I think somehow they take that game to overtime, and now this line has moved from a pick on the look ahead to pa- Patriots minus three and a half with their third string quarterback. This is absolutely insane. So yeah, I love the Lions this week. Mo, you you were also on the Lions, middle of the pack though, because like you said, how can we cap this football game? But but there is a part of me that's like, how is Bailey Zappi laying three and a half points? I mean. <laughs> But at the same time, I honestly think this this move might be more of a reaction to the Lions than the Patriots. Dude, they suck. And they really suck without, I mean, their offensive playmakers. I know they still scored points, but they were down they were down big in that game multiple times. They were times. literally in garbage time every time they scored. Like, they were down multiple scores. That is the fakest. This is what they do, though. I, yes. You always take them when they're getting points every time, especially over a field goal. Always take the Lions if they're getting more than a field goal. He's a not lot. wrong. He's not wrong. You can't be, lay points with the Lions, but like when they're plus three and a half, you got to think about it at least. By the way, if Brett and Mo are both on the Lions, that means DP is laying three and a half with the worst team in the universe quarterbacked by Zeppeli. Okay, but. My, I have an asterisk. There's no buts. I have an asterisk on my notepad, and I have written down. We need to check with this game on Saturday morning because we need to see what these playmakers are doing for Detroit. That, I mean, that scares me because if if Goff has to go to New England outdoors, like like that, that's scary to me. If he has no playmakers, if he has playmakers, I'm probably going to be on the Lions. I mean, this is lower on my card. This is in coin flip territory for me this week. Um, the the other side, like like. I know it's Bailey Zappi, and he looks... Okay, but I do want to jump in. What if it's not Bailey Zappi? Who's well, it going to be? Gary are. Gilbert? <laughs> Hoyer's not, but Mac Jones pra- practiced. I, is, is there That's any fake. chance he plays? This is, this is smoke and mirrors. There's no way. There's no is it, isn't this, way. It, yeah, and the way the NFL rules are set up is if you take one snap in practice, or if you take 1% of the snaps in practice or 99% of the snaps in practice, you're just limited. Like, if you literally miss one snap in practice, you get listed as limited. If you take one snap, it's limited. Do you know why, so do you know why it's not going to be Mac Jones? Just because doing calisthenics. It's not going to be Mac Jones because he wants a second opinion different from the team doctor because he doesn't trust the team doctor trying to force him back to play. Mac Jones W-E- does not E-E-I. care. W-E-E-I <laughs> facts getting in here. So get Mac Jones out of here. And it also uh-huh. works against it being Mac Jones when they signed a quarterback. They wouldn't sign something, a quarterback because they've had two quarterbacks. That's all they've they've done. Something Dilbert. Yeah, something Dilbert. The, the things that I'm looking at here. Why can't why can't the Pats just run straight, guys? First, well, yeah, that's the thing. If, if, line yards. If the Lions oh, they will. don't have first. those people. They're just gonna run straight, <laughs> nonstop. They will. There's gonna be points in this game. There's no question. <laughs> Even Bailey Zappi is gonna score points in this game. That's how bad the Lions' defense is. This is an all this is an all time bad defense. Something. Can you Zeppelin. trust? Can you trust Matt Patricia to actually do what needs to be done, or is he gonna 
let his stupid ego get in the way and try and try and do things that he doesn't need to do. They should just line up and run straight, hundred percent. Yeah, bring back the wing T. But can you trust Matt Patricia? He that guy's a moron. <laughs> I mean, he's probably going to run like end arounds and flea flickers. And what he's like, we're going to beat him by 40. F this team. I hate them. This like the, the Matt Patricia revenge game, too. Again, you, you, you're you you're shoveling all this dirt on the team that you're laying three and a half with them. So Because ultimately, the Lions are really effing bad. And it's Jared Goff <laughs> outside with no playmakers. I mean, what? Again. I have an asterisk, and we have to talk about this on Saturday because if, if if we get word that Amon Ross St. Brown's in, I mean, let's go. Let's put him on the card. Giants, Packers, DP and Brett are on the Giants. Mo and I are on the Packers. Lions, Pats. It's the Disciple and his mentor, both on the Lions plus three and a half. DP and I have the Patriots. Who's ready for some Lone Wolves? <laughs> Back-to-back weeks where Lone Wolves do not do well. Again, that is good for the collective 1-3-1 one, and one last week. Over the last two weeks, 2-9-1, two, and one, which means the majority is coming through, which means the collective as a unit is picking winners. And this week, we're going to have some contention, specifically between Brett and I. We're going to be butting heads during this segment because while you guys... Turned your back while you guys tried to write him off. He didn't write back. And now he goes out every single week, shreds every single defense in front of him, leads the NFL in every quarterback metric that is important. And yet you idiots are lining up to lay five and a half points with Andy Dalton and the New Orleans Saints. Maybe Andy Dalton. What's what's worse, Jameis Winston with a broken back or Andy Dalton? They're the same. They both suck. I'm fine laying five yeah. and a half with either one of them. Why? Why? How does this make sense? This is a bad football team. Folger Priors. Why the are, are bad. they bad? They looked pretty good last week. They outgained they the Vikings five five point nine to five point one yards per play last week. That was without Jameis, without Alvin Kamara, and without Michael Thomas. Kamara's back this week. They're getting healthier against Kirk in prime time. Do it against a good team. Prime Isn't world. the Seahawks playing in this game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the Seahawks, one of the best offenses in the NFL. Stop by it. Every at just, some it. point, my pick on this is: at some point, the Seahawks are coming back to earth, buddy. Okay, why? There is no way they are gonna perform like this every week. No shot. So they are coming so, back so, down, and the crash is gonna be so hard. We've seen four and a half quarters of Russell Wilson. Okay, what if Russell Wilson is just flatly a bad quarterback? What if Moe's been right this whole time? Okay. So what if the Seahawks put in, I'm going to pump my brakes a little bit, a slightly above average quarterback into an offense with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf? Why is this so shocking that they might actually be good at offense? Because they you know, played two awesome. good defenses and they were not good. And yeah. then they played the Falcons and the Lions 8.8 yards per play last week. That's why they're third in the NFL in offense right now. That's why. They were middle of was, the they were middle of the pack going into last week. Then they faced the Lions. But again, blowing out is predictive. Like they got a juicy matchup and they crushed them. Like they scored at will. They could have scored more if they wanted the Giants to. Giants are a real at, defense. G- Gino was at eleven point one yards per attempt. You know who else and would they have had eleven point one yards per attempt? Rancho Cucamongo High School. Okay, <laughs> literally that Lions Bailey's defense Bailey. is so bad. <laughs> Rancho, why can't why can't the Seahawks win this game? Why I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. You're not, but I promise you one thing: the Saints are the sharp side. People are going to be on the Seahawks, and that's for sure. This this stinks. They're begging you to take the yes, one thousand percent. That's literally why I clicked Saints. I had this line <laughs> fair, and I'm and like, they, I know the Saints are the sharp side, so I'm clicking Saints. Didn't look Saint. bad last week. But they, it's a London game, like. All the evidence so far is that the Saints are just an average football team. So how can an average football team quarterbacked by Jameis Winston with a broken back or Andy Dalton lay five and a half points against any football team in this league? That's not named the Houston Texans or the Chicago Bears. Well, you said 
Geno Smith's biggest problem, horrific awareness in the pocket. Dude, he's going to be under a lot of pressure from... Is the, he, though? Yes. The what? Saints are 29th in pressure rate, 20th in adjusted sack rate. They're going to get pressure because the Seahawks stink, dude. He's under pressure all the time. He He's making all these crazy throws. Dude, he's... Because he's maybe breaking, he's good. He's breaking Hello? CPOE. That's not going to keep going. Why? What evidence do we have that it won't? Because it's he's a, he's been on his fourth team. What's it? But he's been on his fourth team and not playing. He's like, how do we he's not know Jeremy that? Lin he's of the NFL. Of snaps. Yeah. The guy what has what a little he's, success and Rich loses what if his friggin' what if mind. He's, what if he's Kurt Warner? He's Jeremy Lin. <laughs> That's who he is. Okay. Little success <laughs> and everyone's just Lin sanity. Rich is going nuts over here. I'm telling you, the crash is going to be hard, man. Wean Gino. yourself off the drug slowly <laughs> so it doesn't hit so hard when it comes. Gino Freed. Another one where I- I'm going to need you guys to fold your priors. Like, we have enough evidence to change our opinion on these teams. And the Rams stink. You guys love the Rams. Brett, this is the, us butting heads. Brett loves the Rams this week. And why? Shocker. Offense- Brett's on the sharp side again. O- offensive line stinks. They have one play. And that's throw it to Cooper Cup. That's literally the offense. Anybody can scheme against this. Anybody that's been playing Madden can scheme against. They're going to throw to one person. And, oh, it's Cooper Cup. All right? We've had four the weeks. Niners, we've had four weeks of this sample of a one play. We know this offense can operate at a high level. We just saw them win the friggin' Super Bowl last year. We saw them win the Super Bowl last year with a line that played well. And on the this is double trenches. Without Von Miller, where's this pass rush? Where's the pressure? It's it's not existent. Aaron Donald took his hundred million dollars and and effed off. He's done. I don't know. If, how can the Rams? Done. I don't know. If how, I don't know if how can this is the most Donny? This is Donny <laughs> calling into the Patriots. Uh, what, what did he say? Bill Belichick needs to retire. Uh, I don't remember what else. I think it was who, the Bills need to trade Josh, Josh Allen. Allen yeah. quit football or something because they <laughs> lost. Yeah. Who is who is a better pass rush, Niners or Dallas? It's Spider Man, me, may f. I was I would take I, Niners. But when but when does spi- the Cooper rush regression happen? Who cares? You're laying points with Andy Dalton. I can take five and a half of Cooper Rush. He's been fine. What if he's Spider Man, me with Dak? Dak just might be meh. I don't know. I like Cooper I, might be. I, I like buying the Rams that they're at. This is the absolute lowest you can buy the Rams. This is it. Yeah, this is just the rule of who played the worst last week. You have to take the team that played the worst. There is no way anybody played worse than the Rams. Absolutely That's, no way. They how's, that been working, create, how's that been working this year with the with the commanders? A quarter of a... Right? Well, I'm back on and the some commanders, of these, so you take so, it easy. That's what I mean. Like, some of these spots, like, you just have to look at the teams. I don't know. This is a tailor-made sharp spot. I agree. But I'd be more shocked if the Rams are elite than if they are bad at this point. (laughs) What happened, Mo? That has to be intentional grounding. (laughs) What are you... (laughs) Donnie, you've been quiet. What do you think I mean, about there's these so teams? much yelling and like you know, <laughs> just lots of laughter. I mean, this is it's great. It's it's you know, I'm just watching the show. I mean, I'm just this is another one where like looking at the Seahawks, I look at the Dallas and I, and I'm just like they have to come back to earth at some point. Like there's just no way. I I refuse to believe not only Cooper Rush being this good of a quarterback. I refuse to believe Mike McCarthy can keep his head on straight as much as he has been. I just refuse to believe that stuff. Gallup getting healthier. I don't know, guys. The market is finally corrected on Dallas, but now it's overcorrected. Like, the market's giving too much credit to the Cowboys now. This line was, yeah. It, wasn't it was like six and a, it was like six and a half yeah. or seven. This line is still saying that the Rams are a touchdown better. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, I was doing the opposite. Sorry, 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 sorry. Math. Hashtag math. A field goal better, though. I need to, I need the yeah, field goal better on neutral. I need to get off my soapbox and let somebody else take over. Brett, you're up next. In the middle of your card, you have another bird. Ka-caw! The Baltimore Ravens laying three and a half at home on Sunday night football against another sounder, the Bengals. 
What you got on ball? This is got to buy him after a loss. This team never going to get him lower. This team is two plays away from being 4-0. What would the line, what would this line be if the Ravens were 4 and 0 right now cuz they could be 4 and 0 right now. Minus 4? I don't know, it wouldn't be too crazy. I, I, so give me the line value then. I I don't know I, I don't have a whole lot of conviction in this game. I, I just think it's a good spot to bet the Ravens after like, you know, they lost last week, but there's a game they could have won. And the Bengals Mo beat Teddy I, Bridgewater. Mo and I both love the Bengals really? this week. I've been screaming though, so I'll let Mo take the floor. Started off. Why do we like Cincinnati so much? I don't even like Cincinnati, but do they match up pretty well with Baltimore? I mean, Baltimore's corners stink. They've been getting their asses kicked all year. What are they going to do against these receivers? We saw what the Bengals did to them last year. I just think this line should be three, man. This is a week where I don't have very much conviction in anything. So I'm taking this hook and I'm putting it near the top of my card. I mean, I I don't know what else to do. I, I will say... There's a lot of danger here. If Zach Taylor tries to come out and pound the rock, it, okay, this is rule of you need coaches numbers. If if I could text Zach Taylor and say, hey, throw deep every play like you did when you needed yards against the Dolphins, what do you know? T. Higgins for 50. If, if he just did that every play, the Bengals should be minus three and a half here. But he won't. He's going to halfback dive. But hopefully he at least throws deep enough to cover three and a half. Okay, because this passing offense should do work against this secondary, man. Why do the Ravens suck at covering receivers? I don't understand it, but it keeps happening. So at this point, I just have to believe it's a thing. Well, they're all dead. I mean, they're they're they they have had they've been good in the secondary for years. They have nobody left. And they're a blitz happy team, even in the post Wink Martindale era, 11th in blitz rate. And despite that, only getting the 27th best pressure rate. In the league, Burrow elite against the Blitz, right? Again, his his it's so crazy how comparable he is to Brady. And this it's another one where if you send extra rushers and Burrow can get matchups that are one on one, Burrow tends to pick the right one. And when you got guys like Chase and Higgins and Boyd, it's really not that hard to to pick out the right matchup. So yeah. Uh, I'm I'm just going based off of last year and this bad Raven secondary and such a valuable hook too. It's been staying at three um, for the most part, but I think that's also going to make Cincy a tad popular. But then, Brett, but you're then gonna... people are clicking on the Ravens. I, I mean, it says on the charts that people are taking Ravens. So I don't think I they're going to take I would, three and a half. I would think they yeah. wouldn't, but I, I'm just looking at this chart and it's telling me since he is is the not popular side in this one. Another lone wolf for Brett where the collective loves the other side. <laughs> Stink face for Mo. Tell us why you like Gang Green, Brett. I don't like Gang Green. I don't like this game <laughs> at all. This game is all about Zach Wilson. We know what we're going to get out of Teddy, Teddy Covers. We know what Teddy Bridgewater is going to do. Can Zach Wilson step up and make throws against a blitz-heavy team and take advantage of these tremendous Jets weapons against poor corners? I mean, the, the Dolphins' secondary is an infirmary right now. Uh, so this is a great test for Zach. Is he good or not? Because I think th- he has, he'll have some opportunities in this game to what make plays. What do you think, Brett? Probably this not. Definitely- Probably not. <laughs> But I don't know. I think the range of outcomes in this game is pretty wide and, and probably as wide as any any game on this uh, on the slate this week. So I stayed away from this game, but it sounds like you guys love it. So I can't wait to hear why. So what you just said again, another just game with a massive range of outcomes. I think that this total is so stupid. This total opened like 43, 44. It's already creeping up to 45, 46. It's going to close higher. Because as Brett noted, this Xavier Howard injury is massive for the Dolphins secondary. If he doesn't go, and this is a Dolphins team that, again, another team that can't generate pressure, 31st in pressure rate. If you can't generate pressure and you can't cover, you're absolutely right, Brett. This should be the coming out party for Zach Wilson. Hooking up with Garrett, hooking up with Elijah, getting Corey Davis involved. The Jets should be able to march in this game. But they might not because Zach Wilson might be a bad quarterback. This is, as our buddy Jan says, this is litmus. This is it, right? Put up or shut up time for for Zach Wilson. And I'm, again, leaning on my prior here. Zach was 
last in every major category last year. And I'm not worried about Bridgewater one iota. You know, you look at, uh, I looked at Tua and Bridgewater. Tua's EPA per play before McDaniel got there and Bridgewater's EPA per play post Vikings. So while he was like this journeyman bouncing around bad teams and Bridgewater has a higher adjusted EPA per play. So we get Bridgewater into this offense on 10 days to prepare back to back. But thanks NFL schedule makers. You God, I can't curse back to back teams with 10 days rest for the jets. Thanks Roger. Appreciate that. So that's a big, well, these are the same people who are making us watch the Broncos <laughs> on national TV every other week. So this was supposed to be a big like playoff matchup. How bad are the Colts? They, these both these teams stink, but the Colts are bottom five. If I, if I'm in your guys's presence and I bet the Broncos again, you have permission to kick me in the nuts. I mean, the best play of the game was two guys running into each other and catching a ball. This is embarrassing. <laughs> how, how bad is Hackett? I mean, this is incredible. I, I've never seen this. I've never seen a coach this bad. He has to be the worst. Urban Meyer, worst culture, but at least his team ran somewhat reasonable plays where receivers weren't running into each other. I mean, this is incredible. I just, how do you even escape the interview room? By the end of the season, Mo's going to be batting 800 for the YouTube opener. <laughs> oh, man. DP Dolphins. We're, we just love Miami and the, Dolphins, the, greatest football team. the greatest football team this year. I mean, first of all, you can't trust Zach Wilson. All that stuff you said, Rich, about them marching, in theory, great, man. Great. <laughs> great theory. In practice, we've seen that work. It doesn't work. And then, honestly, I, I don't, like, is Teddy playing with, like, one arm? Like, I don't understand what why, why people are, like, so scared of Teddy Bridgewater. Like, this line moved a lot, like, and I'm like, well, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with Teddy Bridgewater? I'm going to have a lot of money on this one myself, and it's probably going to be unhealthy for me to watch this game, um, but I'm going to do it. I mean, th- they're treating this injury like it's it's like if Aaron Rodgers went out and Jordan Love goes in. Like th- that's it's like the equivalent. And I'm like, what what is happening? And plus, what <laughs> works in their advantage, like, yeah, you throw Teddy Bridgewater in the middle of a game last week. I get it. Like spur of the moment type of thing. Understandable. But this, he has a full, he has, well, he has more than a week to prepare. As you mentioned, Rich, he has 10 days. Like, that's great, you know? And I trust Mike McDaniel. I think what we've seen so far from him this season, that I'm willing to trust him, you know, overall. And I think he's going to have this team ready to go and have Teddy ready to go. Are you guys worried at all about the Dolphins wide receiver injuries? I'm not, as Mo leaves. (laughs) I'm not too concerned. Um, Again, this is something to monitor, but I'm seeing a lot of LPs. Not a lot of DNPs. Was was Waddle a DNP again on Thursday? Was he? Is he a no? Nah, he DNP? was limited. Yeah, I'm not too. I, I'll. Yeah, Waddle limited. didn't look like Waddle last week though either. So I, I don't know. I, I feel like this. They might lack some explosiveness this week, but it's not like Teddy can get them the ball down field anyway. So there's also a little bit of narrativeville here. Teddy's a Miami guy playing for his hometown team. This is his shot, although it's not in. At Hard Rock. A little bit of narrative. A little sprinkle a little narrative. Look at Freddy's disgust. You guys have your fun. He's, he's not as disgusted as me right now because I'm having to watch <laughs> the Broncos that I wagered money on and laid points with. We'll go to, we'll go to Donnie. What just happened? What happened? Yeah, what, what oh, made like a 35 yard field goal. <laughs> I mean, they can't do anything right, dude. How does this dude. This is why I can never own a professional team. People would be fired in like a quarter. I'd just go be a quarter in and I would just fire hack. Well, don't I mean, worry. If you keep betting on the Broncos, time. you're never going to own a professional team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Donnie's two lone wolves are right at the bottom. Second to Love last it. and last. And we'll start with second to last. <laughs> nope. They don't make that sound. <laughs> they make that sound. It is the Atlanta Falcons plus eight and a half against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Buccaneers, I put this in the chat. Did somebody get seriously injured on Atlanta? Because this steamed tremendously today, all the way up to 10. DP, once again, turning your back on your boy, your boy Tommy, in, in a time of need. 
for Tom. When in he needs everyone need, around yeah. him Tommy doesn't, to Tommy rally doesn't, around him, he doesn't need and give him some me. love. He needs his, he needs <laughs> Giselle to just get on board with the Super Bowl train. Okay, like this is this is ridiculous. Okay, um, I mean, this is my my one and two pointer. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. I just clicked the points. I don't think the Bucks are playing that well. Like their offense is not playing that well, running away with teams. So I'm gonna take my frisky Falcons that I've been backing and a fan of all season. The Falcons are the fakest good team in the league by a very wide margin. No, but they're who not. Says they, they're good. Yeah, who says they're good, man? Dude, people love this Falcons. Well, team. the people are ridiculous. And that's fantasy. People fantasy. are stupid. <laughs> fantasy yeah, nerds people, love the Falcons. Absolutely, and they stink. They want to establish it. They're like third in run rate. Some insane amount of the time, they're running the ball and. I, I joke about you guys wanting to fold your priors. I don't want to fold my priors just yet on this Bucks rush defense because it has been quite suspect. But like, I, I'm not ready to believe that like Vita Vea is going to just stop run stuff. Who's running yeah, the football something. for the Falcons anyway? Algier? Something Huntley. Something Huntley. Huntley? Listen, I just want to tell you my my friend's scouting report. You guys know Josh. He's a fantasy nerd. He was watching very closely. Okay. He said. Huntley was running like a madman on the plays he watched. <laughs> hey, he was impressed. Something Huntley's running, coming for it. Running like a madman. Guy gets a shot and actually tries. Wow. Shocked. As, as somebody who's been in Tom Brady's division for way too many years, the Bucks are going to win this game 40 to 10. I know it with every fiber of my being. Brady's going to throw for 350. They're going to destroy this Atlanta team. This is this is pillage season. And for the first time all Tom. year, like the Falcons have no way to combat it with any offense. Patterson's out. It doesn't look like Pitts, Pitts is, is going to play. Like, and say what you want about Pitts' what? production to this point, like he still presents a huge challenge to defenses. It gets a yeah, lot. The defense of, still has to have solutions. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Just just him being on the field, they have to defend it. Yeah. What does this Atlanta team do in big negative script? <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. I love the Bucks. I'm actually pissed that this steamed because I I love it should be ten. Bucks. It should be ten. Maybe maybe can't even higher. Be any worse than Matt Ryan. When are people gonna get on board? <laughs> this is the worst offense in the NFL. Bar none. Maybe Chicago, but I don't well, know. Man. This one is because they're I don't even know who this running back is. And Kelly, Kelly went back to the locker room and on an already bad offensive line. Ryan Kelly gets but hurt. He throws off his back foot every other play, but he's got a worse arm than my buddy who's at home drinking Budweiser's. <laughs> Donnie's very last bit. The bills make me wanna. Laying two touchdowns with the Buffalo Bills, DP. I mean... I, I, it's my one pointer. I don't have much conviction here, but I'm just ultimately going to take the team that I think can actually score 14 points versus the team that I don't think can score at all. Something Kenny Pickett QB1 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's this narrative going around this week about how when the Bills win, they win by wide margins. But I was going through some of their box scores, Brett, and correct me if I'm wrong. They just beat up on horrific teams. They boat race with, bad teams. The past two years, yeah. yeah, they just run away. And while I said the Steelers are bottom three, if you put a quarterback in there that's actually going to push the ball downfield and you have these weapons, I mean... So you stop pretending you know what Kenny Pickett is. Yeah, you're out here like you have a whole season sample size <laughs> with this guy. I mean, are you kidding I, me? I, dude, Pickett... I knew immediately what Pickett was on Sunday. He got waxed by Quinn and Williams on a play and got up and laughed in Quinn and Williams' face. I know Kenny Pickett is going to swagger onto that field and chuck the ball as far as and he throw can. Seven is it going to? I was going to say. I was going to say. Is it going to always result in something good? I don't know. But it, in a game where we're three catching kicks in like fourteen attempts last yeah. week. One of them was tipped and one of them was the Hail Mary. So let, let's not let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. But still a Bill secondary that's hurt. Right? 
something. Your boy, Benford, is still a DNP. Obviously, Micah Hyde is on IR. Sleepy spot for the Bills, sandwiched between the Ravens and the Chiefs. The sleepiest Brett, you, spot. Brett, you're making those faces but you, for any team. <laughs> I mean, you clicked the Steelers. Yeah, I did because it's it's a lot of points. Uh, but I don't know. The, the Steelers they do have playmakers on this team, a lot of playmakers, which I like. But do I trust Kenny Pickett to go out there and I just I. Pick it and he's not going to turtle. He's not going to no, turtle. Not. I'll tell he's you He's going to Ryan Fitzpatrick is what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah. And so I mean, they could either be in this game. But the Steelers have played the Bills really well over the years. I mean, Tomlin has prepared for this Bills roster extremely well the past two, three years. Uh, so I think that is something. Uh, these these are two just very different teams. That's no, you want to put a pin on this game? Kind. He said very different. Um what about the wind? I feel like the wind helps the Steelers. Seventeen mile per hour winds. I was seeing potentially here. How does Maybe that? How does that help the Steelers? Just I was gonna say, what if the ball up? blows out of Kenny Pickett's tiny random. little hand? <laughs> we want random. Josh only. Allen has pierced through that wind for oh, two like years he did now against the Patriots last year. Right? He was really piercing. Uh, well, that was Dayball's fault. Dayball was Dayball was too busy looking up rental properties in New Jersey. Wait, what? What <laughs> game are we talking? You talk about the game we went to? Yeah, yes, we're... it wasn't even a real football game. <laughs> that was like 90 mile per hour winds. I think we're getting 15 mile per hour gusts this weekend. Let's calm down. Isn't isn't there some like record of Josh Allen? He's not good in the wind. I thought that was a thing. Trends could be trends. Wind trends <laughs> could be trends. Um, yeah, and this is the sleepiest man. I feel like every player who's like remotely injured on the Bills is just taking this game off. They, lost the Steelers. Need a scout. they just lost to the Steelers last year. There's no way they're looking past we, this game. We need a scout circled. We need a scout at Bar Bill. How many Bills are in there? How many times has Josh gone this week? Yeah, Brett know, just posts sleepy. up there every night. I mean, what, what have you got to do? <laughs> <laughs> they got He's Wi-Fi? Really need to Bring your I computer. <laughs> I, was just, I was just there a couple days ago. Yes. No Bills. No yes. Bills in, in attendance, though. Oh, let's see. They're focused. <laughs> I'm like, damn it, now I gotta mark that. <laughs> cap for Barbell. Got a cap for Barbell. That's as One good as anything lo- else this week. <laughs> One last Lone Wolf, and it's from Mo. Back to back weeks as a Lone Wolf on the cards. Just like DP, though, at his very bottom. Talk about it. How'd that go for you guys last week? Got the dub. The only Lone Wolf <laughs> winner last week was from um. Monor. <laughs> Isn't this just a fair line? I have nothing to say on this one. This is this is like the Steelers and Bills game, really, though. I mean, isn't this the sleepiest spot for the Eagles? They're going to overlook the Cardinals. That, that's the only reason I'm on the Cardinals. I think it's fair, but I don't think we're going to get peak Eagles here. So do you I think guess Jalen Hurts goes to sleep? Like, do you honestly think Jalen Hurts and the city of Philadelphia sleeps? You think Kelsey on, sleeps? Give it to me. Like you think I, I revved you think these you guys go. sleep. No, there's no shot. No shot. They're not in the city of Philadelphia. I'm just saying, it's in your freaking veins, man. <laughs> Hashtag veins. The the reason why I picked the Eagles is because this game is indoors. And the only time I've seen the Eagles play bad football is in bad weather. So if we're gonna get this Eagles team with perfect conditions, them such so elite in the trenches. I mean, again, what is what is Kyler going to do? What's the point of having a Rondell Moore? Imagine being Rondell Moore and going through all that Did you physio. see that play where he was just running out of bounds trying to catch it? This team is so bad, so poorly coached. I mean, I... Can you imagine being the owner of the Cardinals? Speaking of owner talk, sitting in your desk this summer... And giving all the money to Kyler, Steve Keim, and Cliff Kingsbury. Can you imagine? Well, doing what do that? we? How do we feel about when Nook comes back? That's two weeks away. How do we adjust for that? Because it's it's coming. They're gonna be they're gonna be better for sure. How much better though? Because this offense has looked good the past couple of years. Well, I guess it would be last they've looked, year. They've they've looked good, but they've also ran way above expectation in certain scenarios. Uh, 
I saw Warren Sharp posting about their third down conversion efficiency last year was just way off the charts to start the season and they're 32nd this year. So now that's that's over regression to the mean, right? Most people, when they think of regression to the mean, they think that you're going to dip below the mean to get back to the mean. But all regression really means is that you're actually getting back to average. So what's happening now is certainly not predictive. I don't think they'll run this poorly on third down. So yeah, I think Nook... Unleak, unlock something in this offense where they don't have a true player to put outside right now. Like Hollywood's doing the outside stuff, right? But Hollywood's going to work better in this offense where he can just be your deep post go guy where you need somebody that can play outside and challenge on, you know, hitches and in routes and just do all the dirty stuff that, that Nook does. Then you can have your opposite uh, outside receiver streaking down the field and then just keep Rondo more inside. So kind of like how we were talking about how Pitts, like Pitts might be not producing right now, but just him being on the field is huge for Atlanta. Just having Nook on the field for the Cardinals is going to be a, a pretty big game changer. So yeah, I'll be interested to to buy Arizona when he comes back, especially if the market keeps treating them like this. I mean, nobody wants to bet on the Cardinals even after a road win. The Lone Wolves. I am on two public dogs, nothing stinkier. Hawks and Cowboys. Brett's on the Ravens and Jets. Donnie's got the Falcons and Bills. Mo is low on the Cardinals. Strap in, boys. It's time for the card. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, fire. A very uncharacteristic card incoming. Very uncharacteristic. And we start with Brett, who has one of the opposites of my lone wolves, Brett. Tell us who you got. Got the Saints. Minus five and a half. That's so good. Can Brett It's can never Brett provide James his Lee. pick like that every week? <laughs> I get excited when it's Jameis week, and maybe maybe we'll get Jameis week this week. I love I love when we have Jameis on the card. It's just so much fun. I actually, terri- I'm terrified. But this is the obvious. Broken. That's the obvious spot. We have to we have to have the Saints this week. What are the veto rules, Rich? I'm I'm not firing. The collective has been too solid to start. I must trust in the collective. So there's one favorite. How about a second favorite? How about a team laying more than a touchdown? DP, who do we got? Our first consensus pick. Minnesota Vikings playing the absolute worst team in football. The Bears have averaged like 90 pass yards. I mean, I don't even know. Like, you can't, if you look up the stats. It's literally 98 or 97. You can't believe it looking at the the game log. Like, you just can't fathom that a team is passing for sub 100 yards per game in 2022 NFL. But it's happening, and it is the Chicago Bears, and they are god effing awful. He's not wrong. Mo, also in your top five, that's why you're grinning ear to ear pylon. Yeah, I bet I bet Vikes on the look ahead the second I saw it last week when I wrote the article, minus six and a half. I knew that was on the wrong side of seven. One hundred percent. I was like, there's no way this line can be under seven. I don't know what it's gonna be, but it has to be above seven. And and it went to seven right away, and it's already seven and a half. I was telling people early in the week, I still think seven is fine. And yeah, now it's seven and a half. But that'll make it a better contest play, dude. Nobody's going to lay seven and a half. Nobody likes laying points in the contest. And I think there's a lot of game scripts where the Vikings win this by 20. I mean, like Donnie said, so not only do we have a bad passing offense, but look look at the lines for these Bears games. Dude, they've been playing the Texans and the Giants. We, we haven't seen the Bears in a negative script, like down multiple scores. Like what happens when they're down 14 to 3 and they have to and they have to pass a team that literally does not call passing plays. 
Well, I, they I were told, they were down fourteen to the Packers, right? And they were literally not calling passing plays the whole. It was they just kept, it was they just kept establishing that happened. That's true, and they lost that game by like seventeen or whatever it was. I mean, dude, if the Vikings, I don't, I don't even like the Vikings right now. I think this team was overrated, but they should bury the Bears. This team you know is this atrocious. This reminds me of I think 2016, 2017. Cardinals Jets Monday night. Twenty where we had the fifteen. <laughs> I think we had the Cardinals consensus yeah. minus seven and a half, and they won by like yeah. I'll never, that infinite. was that was Thursday night, wasn't it? I think it was Thursday night. It was it was some some island game, and yeah. There's there's two ways to compete against the Vikings: throw the ball and challenge Dantzler and Peterson, and rush the quarterback and get to Kirk Cousins. The Bears really can't do either of them. They, they choose not to throw the ball. And their pressure to date uh, has been suspect. So, Brett, how are you feeling about this? I like this one. This is the get-right spot for Kirk. At home, not in prime time, not overseas, no excuses. I guess a team that really is looking for every opportunity to run the football and, and should never be able to find a backdoor. So this should be a route. I don't think the Bears can keep, keep pace here at all. So yeah, I, I like I like the Vikings quite a bit. If Brett didn't take the sharpest side on the card, most certainly did. I did not want to touch this game. I knew I knew what was necessary. <laughs> I mean, we had to. David Baker, close your ears, press pause. <laughs> Who do we got? I wanted Brett to be proud of me for once for a contest play. There's absolutely nobody in the world besides me who's going to click on the Panthers here. What do you think, Brett? (laughs) I have one note for this game while I was setting up the show. I have Mo Panthers plus six and a half. It's a consensus, but we're all terrified. (laughs) Yeah, I wanted nothing to do with this game. (laughs) You're right. Nobody's going to pick the Panthers, but that's because they're going to lose by 20. Short week. Short week. Jimmy G. I know it checks on all the, the boxes. Road. I get it, but the Panthers are so Outside. bad. Cross against the, the Carolina team. This was Coming Jimmy G. Last week. Win. Oh, such a good spot to click the pan. This is coming from somebody. I also bet the 49ers the second I saw the look ahead line. But now it's oh, so three points at, higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got them at three. Now it's uh, it's six and a half in the contest. We're getting the hook on. Six, which again is becoming a key number with all these teams going for two. We we just gotta score two touchdowns, right? That's like, we just gotta find a way. To, come on, CMC. Let me just say that if you bet the Cardinals or sorry, the Panthers this week, please parlay it with the under, because there's absolutely no chance in the world they will cover in a high scoring game. Because they can't know, 39 score. Is, 39 is so small. Mo's on I that, don't yeah, care. I, Every Panthers underdog. under is 16 to 10 final. <laughs> yeah, generally you're right. My pick. So we've got one favorite from Brett, one favorite from Donnie. Guys, we got Coin Brady on the card. Bucks minus eight and a half against this clown. Excuse me, clown Falcons team. DP, how you feeling? Your your frisky Falcons. I mean, whatever. This is my two pointer. So, <laughs> if you guys got conviction on it, let's roll. Let's go. I'm, listen, Brady's you know, ab- you know, I will, I will get behind shred. you in support of Tom Brady. Like, I will line up. If he needs a lawyer for this divorce case, Tom, give me a call. I don't know, <laughs> you but know I'll help you mark that because I just swore. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is Brady, twenty seven of thirty five for three fifty and three. Brett. Slicing and dicing. Brett, the Falcons. this is the opposite of a contest play, though. I understand, but is it? Are people gonna line? I understand the line, the line is move. Ten. I understand, but, but are people gonna line up after they just got pasted in prime time to lay eight and a half points against the Frisky Falcons? Yeah, this might not be a top five play in the contest. It'll be close, though. But I also, who cares? Yeah. You know, it should be ten and a half. So it it should it's it should okay. be doubled. 
We already have three favorites, and the collective machine is going to give us a fourth. This is, the, if we're talking trends, this is not good for the collect. Collective favorites are usually trash. Who do we got? The collective chooses Miami and the Dolphins, the greatest football team. For the second time this season, the collective. Can you just, prom- can you just promise dolphins. me that we can change this if, like, there's any indication that Tyreek or Waddle is not going to be 100. percent Of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. And we're not just going to blindly Zach, fire. Zach is going to do dolphins. it to us. I just know he's going to do it to us. This is the Zach's this is the Zach week. Do it to us. I when, just when know Teddy does it game. when Teddy does it for us, I might pledge to ride my bike to work next week <laughs> every day when Teddy Two Gloves gets the job done for us. Let's go, Teddy. I'll tell you what, Brett. I hope Zach does it. I will be rooting for Zach to do it to us, but I've seen this way too many times. Mo, you were gonna say something. Brett's the king of overreactions off the look ahead. This line was six and a half last week. It moves three points? I consider that, but you guys know I'm higher on the Jets than, than most, too. I, I really like this offense. So maybe maybe they figure it out against a, a really poor secondary. Zach could just go off this week. I mean, Zach last week had some absolute blow-up moments that were, pa- that were uh, painted over by that game-winning drive. Like, I don't know if it was... No, because he was perfect. He was 5 or 5 on the game-winning drive. But on the on the penultimate ding drive, he was rolling right and uh, tried to just get one away and just threw it right in Minka Fitzpatrick's bread basket, like five yards in front of him. And that would have been the ball game. Um, so, yeah, I just... I'm, I got to see it. I got to see it from Zach before I can put any faith into it whatsoever. The consensus picks that we did not get to that we can discuss. Mentioned it briefly. Titans at Commanders. This is the exact same as the Panthers. where, although, the, But the, the Niners are way better than the Titans. Um, you just got to gotta click the Commanders, guys. You just, you just you got to trust that the Titans should not be road favorites against anybody. Something Westbrook Nakeem is back to being WR1 for the Titans. Uh, you're, oh, Bobby Woods. Sorry, I forgot about the corpse of Bobby Woods. Um, and if there's, there's literally one thing that the commies do well, and that's defend the run. So if they can slow down Derrick Henry and the Titans rushing attack and can fade Carson Wentz being Carson Wentz, <laughs> Uh, they're gonna have a shot in this game, and the other one, the oh, the other two. This is why I teed it up. Get us into our survivor picks, DP. How about you lead us off with who you plan to take in Survivor this weekend? The Chiefs, Patrick, Canton, Mahomes, Chiefs Kingdom. Mo, how do you feel? I feel, without looking at the grid, pretty good. I had this line as it should have been higher, so. Uh, I do like the Chiefs, and I think there's many scenarios where the Chiefs win by many points here. Um, I think that anyone who has watched the Chiefs this year knows that this team looks extremely good, and this offense has been as crispy as you could realistically hope for right now. And I don't know how the Raiders are going to get a stop, and I don't know how the Raiders are going to keep up when they are going to occasionally allow sacks because... They have a bad offensive line, and Derek Carr will take sacks. So, yeah, I I think it's good. Well said. Speaking speaking of the grid, very interesting week when it comes to Circa Survivor because SurvivorGrid.com has Buffalo, obviously, with the highest market share at 33% as two touchdown favorites, and then the Bucks right below them at 18% share. So half of the projections going to those two teams, but they play Island games in Circa. Now we saw last week that people evidently didn't give a damn about the Island consequences as 44% of the contest took the Green Bay Packers who are now only available to 30% 
of the remaining players, which makes me feel like they might be sneaky on Christmas traveling to Miami. So that's one to to keep in our back pocket. And I'm going to take uh, a team that I think, I hope is not that popular. And as Mo put in his survivor column on the lines.com, doesn't have a lot of future value. And that's the Jacksonville Jaguars coming off of a loss, playing the putrid Houston Texans, a nice get back, get bounce back spot for Jacksonville. Uh, this is only Houston's second game outdoors too, which could bring a little bit of sloppiness to their offense. But honestly, like what are we worried about with this Texans attack when the Jags have such better players in both trenches Hopefully Trevor can hold on to a dry football on Sunday and not turn the ball over. They're also like the healthiest team in the league. If you look at this Jacksonville practice report, it's like five names and that's including IR. And sometimes they just, these, these teams stuff like the weirdest players on IR guys that got hurt in like April are still somehow on IR and the Jags, there's like six players. So love the Jags in the spot. Not a lot of future value. Love it. A lot of nodding. Yeah, Love it. See a lot of nodding, Brett. So going forward, you got you and Donnie aren't going to pick the same team. Is that is that how we're we're attacking that's the, this? That's the plan. Yeah, I, I think I think splitting equity is is uh, is the plan. Mo didn't seem to understand that. <laughs> I'm just disgusted when I watch Matt Ryan. There's absolutely nobody nobody worse taking snaps in the NFL. I'll take anybody, anybody. I will take anyone above Matt Ryan. Bailey there's Zappi. no way there's a worse quarterback. Zeppeli. Does he count? <laughs> I mean, wasn't Zeppeli goat and unprofesh? Didn't he throw for yeah, like 6,000 yards? Western Kentucky. He threw he like threw for 62 infinite. touchdowns or something ridiculous. Hilltoppers, baby. The only thing about the Jags is it's probably going to be pretty popular. I think a lot of people have the Jags. Yeah, Top depending three, on what people. for sure, right? Depend, depending on what people do with these future island games, for sure. I think I think the Jags might be. That's Steve okay, though. I mean, look, they're, I, if they're I, fully I healthy and there aren't that many, that many good spots for them later in the season, I think you just have to click them. And, and there's just there are so many teams laying so many points this week that even if they're top three, it's not going to be as concentrated as last week, I don't yeah. believe. So I, I knew this segment was going to be pretty boring. A lot of big favorites this week. Hoping for some carnage would be nice. But uh, seeing that we're on a couple of favorites as well on our card, maybe... No, or maybe so. Yeah, I was going to say, how much <laughs> carnage do we want? Relax. We're on the chalk here. Scary week. Scary week for the collective. Once again, the cards, Saints, Vikings, Panthers, Bucks, Dolphins. Way too many good quarterbacks. How? On this card, what's right? our record for most points laid on a card? This has got to be top five. It's going to be close. That's for sure. I'm terrified. I am Absolutely. But you know what? This could be the collective turning a new leaf instead of just blindly clicking dogs, blindly taking the quote unquote sharp side. We're zigging when we used to zag. Don't boys. be stubborn. Those are the rules. Hashtag don't be stubborn. Shout out ODB. Can't be stubborn. Five and zero oh incoming. Follow these guys on Twitter at Donnie underscore Peters at Brett Colson CO. Double L S O N at Mo Nuara N U W W A R A H. I'm at Rich T Ryan. Enjoy the football festivities this weekend. We'll be back to recap all the action on Sunday night. Until then, peace. Out.